Fen, I'm so sorry, but we might have to get rid of you. Getting rid of sentimental items can be the hardest of all to declutter. Today I'm going to give you some tips and ideas that will help you to be able to make those important decisions regarding sentimental items. If you're new, my name is Jennifer. I make videos about saving money. I'm also documenting our journey to paying off our mortgage by the year of 2024 and ultimately being financially independent. If that interests you, then make sure you bookmark this channel, hit the subscribe button. That way you don't miss out on what's happening. So what is sentimental clutter? That could be photographs, kids art, things, keepsakes that you have from experiences or from past relationships or maybe that you inherited. Most of the time we don't even display these things. We keep them boxed up at the back of a closet or in a garage just collecting dust. They stress us out because we know that they're there and we know that we don't need to keep them, but we just feel like we cannot get rid of them. The most important thing to know is the sentiment is triggered by the item. Typically the item is not the thing you're actually sentimental about. It's the memory or the person that it evokes. Now, what do you do with sentimental items? One thing you can do is turn them into something useful. Maybe you take somebody's t-shirts or clothing from somebody you've loved and make a quilt for someone else or a, maybe a pillow. You could also take for maybe a baby, you take their coming home uh, outfit and their bracelet and maybe their baby hat and you put it into a uh, display. That way you actually see the thing. I wanna show you what I am doing for my daughter. I am taking my husband's t-shirts, old t-shirts and old flannel shirts, button ups and creating a quilt for her. That way when she's really, maybe he's at work and she's really missing him, she can cuddle up in that quilt. So I wanna show you guys this. Have you guys seen this show? Do you know what this is? This is a t-shirt. I've, I've gone ahead and cut out the square part of it. Does anybody know this? If you know this, let me know down below. And then just things like he has this old t-shirt. He loves beach t-shirts. I've told you guys this before. So I'm taking these beach t-shirts and then I'm going to trim it with um, the different flannel shirts. You can also take a picture of the thing. Let's say someone gave you a beautiful vase, but you have so many of them. Take a picture of it. Looking back on that picture will can bring back the same memories and feelings that you had versus having to actually hang on to that vase. One of the biggest things people talk about are collections, whether it's your collection or an inherited collection. Typically you aren't going to love equally every little piece that's in that collection. What I recommend you do is pick out three or four of your most favorite. That way you can actually display those three or four rather than having that whole collection just sitting somewhere tucked away. What do you do with family heirlooms? These can be very tricky because you don't want to upset anybody else. First, see if anybody else in the family would like it. There could be somebody in the family that always had their eye on that particular piece or would really enjoy it. I know just this past year, I told my mom, she brought up this old Santa and uh, Mrs. Santa that she had hand painted years ago. And I remember even when we dropped it because you could still see the crack, but she glued it back together. So my mom went ahead actually and gave me that Santa and Mrs. Claus for Christmas. I was so excited, but sometimes there are people in your family that actually may want those family heirlooms. Otherwise, if nobody wants it, don't feel bad. Take that picture of it and gift it to somebody who may actually love it. Now, what do you do with gifts? gifts that you don't want. <laughs> Oftentimes we feel extremely sentimental or guilty about keeping these things. Well, we feel guilty about getting rid of them, not about keeping them. We think that maybe somebody will expect to see it or have it displayed if they come over. Think about yourself giving a gift though. You're not always sure if that person's going to love it, but that wasn't the intention. The intention was the love that went behind giving the gift. So know that that person is probably thinking the same thing. They don't necessarily want you to keep something around if you're not, if you don't like it, if you don't enjoy it. The intent behind it is what's important. Accept the love, hug the thing, and let it go. Do the thing a favor and give it to someone who will love it. When decluttering, I always recommend doing these sentimental items last. They are the most difficult and take the most energy. If you are stuck on something, set it aside in a maybe pile. It is okay to do that. 
when you're giving these things away, I like to think about how happy someone else could be with the find. You've heard people going to, let's say, the Goodwill or the local donation center and finding the most amazing thing that they had been looking for. Well, that probably was something that somebody just didn't care for, that just wanted to get rid of. And how amazing was it that that person who found it was so happy to have it? Knowing it could go to a better home and put a smile on someone else's face could help you release that thing. So I hope this video helped a little bit when it comes to decluttering sentimental items. If you like this video, make sure you give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I would love to have you back for more videos. Mm -hmm.